Ezekiel 17. Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Son of man, tell a riddle, and speak a parable to the house of Israel. Say, the Lord Yahweh says, A great eagle with great wings and long, fe and long feathers, full of feathers, which had various colours, came to Lebanon and took the top of the cedar. He cropped off the topmost of its young twigs and carried it to a land of traffic. He planted it in a city of merchants. He also took some of the seed of the land and planted it in fruitful soil. He placed it beside many waters. He set it as a willow tree. It grew and became a spreading vine of low stature, whose branches turned toward him and its roots were under him. So it became a vine, produced branches and shot out sprigs. There was also another great eagle with great feathers, with great wings and many feathers. Behold, this vine bent its roots towards him and shot out its branches towards him from the beds of its plantation that he might water it. It was planted in a good soil by many waters that it might produce branches and that it might bear fruit, that it might be a good vine. Say, the Lord Yahweh says, will it prosper? Won't he pull up its roots and cut off its fruit that it may wither, that all its fresh springing leaves may wither? It can't be raised from its roots by a strong arm or many people. Yes, behold, being planted, will it prosper? Won't it utterly wither when the east wind touches it? It will wither in the beds where it grows. Moreover, Yahweh's word came to me saying, Say now to the rebellious house, Don't you know what these things mean? Tell them. Behold, the king of Babylon came to Jerusalem and took its king and its princes and brought them to him to Babylon. He took some of the royal offspring and made a covenant with him. He also brought him under an oath and took away the mighty of the land that the kingdom might be brought low, that it might not lift itself up, but that by keeping his covenant it might stand. But he rebelled against him in sending his ambassadors to Egypt, that they might give him horses and many people. Will he prosper? Will he who does such things escape? Will he break the covenant and still escape? As I live, says the Lord Yahweh, surely in the place where the king dwells, who made him king, whose oath he despised, and whose covenant he broke, even with him in the middle of Babylon, he will die. Pharaoh with his mighty army and great company won't help him in the war, when they cast up mounds and build forts to cut off many persons, for he has despised the oath by breaking the covenant, and behold, he had given his land, and yet he has done all these things, he won't escape. Therefore, the Lord Yahweh says, as I live, I will surely bring on his own head my oath that he has despised, and my covenant that he has broken. I will spread my net on him, and he will be taken in my snare. I will bring him to Babylon, and will enter into judgment with him there for his trespass, that he has trespassed against me. All his fugitives in all his bands will fall by the sword, and those who remain will be scattered toward every wind. Then you will know that I, Yahweh, have spoken it. The Lord Yahweh says, I will also take some of the, top, of the lofty top of the cedar, and I will plant it. I will crop off from the topmost of its young twigs a tender one, and I will plant it high on a high and lofty mountain. I will plant it in the mountain of the height of Israel, and it will produce boughs and bear fruit and be a good cedar. Birds of every kind will dwell in the shade of its branches. All the trees of the field will know that I, Yahweh, have brought down the high tree and have exalted the low tree, have dried up the green tree and have made the dry tree flourish. I, Yahweh, have spoken and have done it. All right, so this is a parable. It, it even described itself in verse one as, in verse two, as a riddle. So um, in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, uh, particularly Matthew, Mark, Luke, we have parables. And Jesus would often tell a story which had a meaning. And so here we have in Ezekiel a parable, which is a prophecy with a meaning. And um, Ezekiel's an interesting prophet because he doesn't just have the same thing going on all the time. He has these elaborate visions. He has these enacted prophecies. He has regular prophecies. And now he has a parable. <laughs> so there's a bit of diversity. And so this parable is about a 
a fantastic eagle comes down. There's a, a, a tree in Lebanon. It snaps off the top of the tree and takes it off and plants it somewhere. And a vine grows. But then this vine is like looking at this other eagle and wanting the other eagle to take care of it. But then an east wind blows and destroys the vine. So that was the parable. <laughs> it's like your dreams at night where you have these crazy dreams and they don't make any sense until you know the meanings of what the individual symbols are. And then they make sense. So the first eagle is the nation of Babylon. And we know that this is true because it's in the second half of the chapter. As you read further down, uh, in verse 12, don't you know what these things mean? Tell them, behold, the king of Babylon came to Jerusalem and took its king and princes and brought them to Babylon. So that's the part where the eagle comes and snaps off the top of the tree and takes it away and plants it. So the meaning is here. So the meaning is that the first eagle is Babylon. It's a fantastic eagle. The second eagle is also a fantastic eagle. That's Egypt. So they're both two countries. The tree is uh, Lebanon, but it's somehow it's Jerusalem. So the eagle of Babylon comes and snaps the top, the top of the tree. So this is the, the highly educated people like Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. These are the, the, the top people are snapped off and taken away to Babylon and planted there and they're doing fine. But Jerusalem, not this is not Daniel and those guys, but Jerusalem is now looking at this other eagle to say, take care of us. And the other eagle is Egypt. But... Um, now an east wind blows now the east wind is actually babylon again comes and destroys the vine so babylon has taken them away they've made a deal they're connected with babylon but they rebel against babylon they're going to try to connect with egypt but the lord says they've broken covenant say to the rebellious house well they're rebellious because they broke covenant with god but then they also broke their deal with nebuchadnezzar and so then the Lord says that, you know, that because they've despised my covenant, they're going to be entered into judgment and they're going to be judged. At the very, very end of this chapter, a interesting little thing is said. The Lord Yahweh says, I will also take the lofty top of the cedar. So the top of the cedar, which was a, a small group of people that have been taken away to Babylon, some of the better educated ones, the Lord says, I will also take the top of the cedar and I will plant it. But I'm not going to plant it there in Babylon. He's going to plant it somewhere else on a high mountain and a great tree is going to grow and it's going to produce a lot of fruit and birds are going to sit in it. Now that is actually a symbol which is in a parable that Jesus spoke. He said the kingdom of heaven is like a tree <laughs> which grows and becomes the biggest tree in the garden and all the birds come and sit in the branches. So the Lord Jesus is, is connecting to this prophecy right here. And this, in other words, is a kingdom prophecy. So um, we've actually got here in this parable or this riddle, um, kind of like a prophecy about what was going to happen to the people who rejected God. They broke covenant but also a prophecy about what was going to happen with the, with the kingdom of God as well. One was going to shrivel with the east wind and the other was going to turn into a magnificent tree. Now, if you're a part of the body of Christ, the kingdom, you're, you're in the kingdom of God and you're a part of the magnificent tree. <laughs> Isn't that cool? And you're supposed to be fruitful. The, this tree was full of branches bearing fruit. Well, that means, you know, you and me in our lives, we're prayerful. We love people, we serve the Lord, and all around us we, we bring a living water to those we meet. That's us. And the Lord here, Yahweh, says, I am Yahweh, I have spoken, and I have done it. So, yep, he has done it, that's for sure. Lord, I thank you for this parable in chapter 17. Lord, I ask that you'd help us as the kingdom of God, as part of the body of Christ, to be fruitful. Lord, we, we love your word, and I pray your word would be in us. Amen.